Welcome to Project Grown Up. This is a bi-weekly podcast about conquering the phenomenon known as adulthood through hard work, discussion, and most importantly, a lot of laughs. We hope that you'll be a part of this project with us. I'm Amy, here with my co-host Danielle. Hey, hey. And Alex. Hello. This week on Project Grown Up, we're interviewing 16-year-old entrepreneur and Instagram expert, Nidhi Saran. Nidhi has developed a full-time side hustle through her passion for teaching people how to grow and monetize their social media accounts. In just a couple of years, Nidhi has made a positive impact and helped to increase the success of a variety of business owners and fellow entrepreneurs. We will link to it in the bio, but Nidhi also hosts her own podcast, NS Audio, available on Spotify and iTunes, which is a podcast for other go-getters like ourselves and hustlers. This is where she discusses spirituality, personal development, and making some money moves. NS Audio includes amazing interviews, kind of like our uh, PG Inspiring Stories. She also has a lot of shorter, more personal episodes, a lot of great tips and advice and general guidance on growing your Instagram, growing your business, and growing your happiness. So, wow. Uh, first of all, <laughs> but to our fellow show host uh, and perfect guest, apparently, Nidhi Saran, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's really a pleasure. I appreciate all the kind words as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I like to think that I take some really good pictures being, you know, a model and everything. Oh and- my gosh. <laughs> you went there. <laughs> and I thought I had a lot of followers, but um, I'm looking at your Instagram page and you're killing it. So can you tell me how exactly you define an Instagram expert and what makes one an Instagram expert? Yeah, of course. I feel like someone who has experience in anything qualifies them to be an expert as long as you have experience and results. And I've been doing this for around two years. Now, of course, there are people who have been doing it longer than me. But what, what I feel like qualifies other people, therefore qualifies me to be an Instagram expert is I came into this sort of niche where people didn't know how to grow and monetize their Instagram pages. And I was doing that and I helped other people do that. So through the results that I've been getting and the experience that I've had, I feel like I can combine those two plus the skills I have. And that's the reason I kept going with it and call myself an expert for it. It's because I have the results and it's being able to grow an Instagram page and monetize it effectively, efficiently for any niche. That's awesome. And honestly, that's the perfect example. I like how you kind of said that you're like, if you want to be an expert, like teach it to yourself, put in the work ethic, you can be an expert like have the experience. So you're kind of showing within yourself, within your own Instagram, you know, yours says Instagram expert, you're branding yourself right there. You're showing your own like, okay, this is how you monetize because people are already going to look at that. And they're like, oh, I need that in my life. Don't even know. That's awesome. Exactly. Thank um, you. What, what would you say? What's like an average workday look like for you? I mean, you're 16. Are you still in school? Are you like balancing both right now? Or are you? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, okay. I am hustle. balancing both right now. Yeah, because school just started full time this week. So I go to school all morning. I come home around three. And then the rest of the day is just me, um, you know, working on homework and also working on some business work, like whatever calls I got to get on or, um, you know, reaching out to clients, getting client work done, even building new digital products and other things I got down the line. But yeah, it's just school and then straight to getting into business work. And then at the end of the day is just spending time with family and then that's into my nightly routine and that's really it oh my gosh just listening to your schedule is making me tired because i'm like did she not waste any <laughs> time with so Netflix, busy yes yeah so how, how do you make time for everything especially at 16 when you have you know a full day of school and then you have stuff to do even after that when most people who work don't have a ton of stuff to do when they get home yeah of course i mean i feel like it's two things it's discipline and um, this book I read called The Four Hour Work Week. Tim I read that like last summer, and that changed my entire like perspective on being productive, batching your work whenever it comes to content instead of you know answering all your emails on the same day or doing all your content every single day. You do it all in the beginning of the week or the beginning of the month or beginning of the quarter. Get it all done, and it pretty much you know uh, saves time for you. So that's how I do it. And discipline is just with practice. You just get better at, you know, if you really want what you say you want, you're going to make time for what you say you want. And I have deadlines for what I want to accomplish. And if I don't accomplish it, what I treat it like is there's a gun held to my head. And if I don't get it done, then it's going to shoot, you know, so I, that's how I treat my goals. So, you know, I have that sort of discipline. 
that's an amazing way to look at the discipline thing. Honestly, that's something that I really need to work on because, you know, I have the the motivation. I have the reasons that I want to do it. I have the goals that I want to achieve, but it's actually sitting down and doing what I need to do to get it done, pushing myself to do it. That's the problem. So I like how you're like, look, if you don't do this, your life's over. That's it. Is that what you want to do? Is that the choice you're making? Okay, no, then go do what you need to do. Like, I like, sometimes you got to be a little tough yeah. on yourself because nobody else is going to do it. The book she mentioned, uh, Four Hour Work Week, that's uh, Tim Ferriss. He also has a podcast similar to Gary Vee. Um, I actually listened to him before I ever heard about Gary Vee. I started listening to Tim Ferriss back when I was like 21, maybe 19, 21. Um, but he also has like the four hour body. Um, so it's basically the same concept, but instead of like doing four hours of work per week to achieve, you know, your full 40 hours of results you can do four hours of working out per week, basically, or do four hours, what have you. I haven't read that one clearly because <laughs> here we are. Um, but it's like the same thing. And then he has like tools of Titans and a couple others, but he's, I highly recommend him. I like that uh, saying that you said too, about the, it's a little extreme at first. Cause you're like, Oh, gun to your head. It's like, that's an interesting way to think of it. But actually it's like, you know, you don't want to wake up someday and be like, wow, I really did not commit to getting my goals accomplished and regret it. So I think that's yeah. a good way to look at it. It's a lot more, um, it's a lot easier for us to choose, you know, choose the lazy route or choose the easy way out. But if you can t- like consistently let yourself do that, then when you look back, you're going to be like, wow, I copped out of that like 90% of the time. And then you wonder why you don't have the results that you were hoping for. All right. Speaking of results. 90%. We obviously, I know what our, uh, I know consistency is our major, uh, our major downfall here, but quick, just a quick glance here. So I posted a picture on uh, project growing up Instagram about an hour ago, pull that up. I want to get three, like two or three little free critiques from you. Just like basic things that I wouldn't even think at, or that nobody looks at that. You're like, Oh, nobody considers this when they post on Instagram. You're not so going to hurt our feelings wants to take a deep dive into your mind. I mean, certain things like when I, when I looked up, for example, like hashtags, I always thought like, I always just use the ones that I liked. And then someone else told me use as many as you possibly can. And then someone else told me that like 23 to 27 is the ideal number. And I'm like, what in the world? So pull that up when you get a second here on your phone. That's going to be the next question. Yeah. Couple of things. You got it. All right. No, you're just asking for like the page overall or just the, no, no, no. Just the one, just the one I posted about procrastinating like an hour ago just like if you saw that as a post what's in your brain what's the first couple of things that you see that you're like nope 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 uh i'm not gonna lie i think of facebook because (laughs) oh okay because because it's like a meme picture (laughs) no not even because it's a meme i feel like uh like facebook moms would be the ones to like oh no things up and post them on facebook (laughs) No, <laughs> no, no, because you like a way to improve, you know, your content like this. I would yeah. say instead of just straight, you know, taking this from like wherever you got it from, like where did you get it from? Um, I looked at procrastination memes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it from the <laughs> yeah, I got it from got the it internet. Wait, I'm not, I don't know, make me or yeah. my, we ain't got somebody on standby on the payroll making memes yeah. over there. Amy, I lied. You got to turn on the microphone. You're killing me. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. So what I would recommend doing is instead of just like, you can look up memes and have, you know, a template of, oh, I can use these words for the meme. Go on canva.com. Like that's the free website stuff and just start designing them. You know, you can design your own infographics and memes yourself instead of like reposting this. Cause everyone knows, you know, uh, I don't know, some e-cards, you know, that, that, uh, brand that the design yeah everyone knows that. that's why i immediately thought of facebook mom <laughs> facebook that's why i'm I telling you it's a facebook but actually. yeah yeah i think i think the caption is pretty cool i like how you guys have like um like personality in it some people are very serious with their captions you know it's good to be like writing pretty good in your captions just to relate to your audience and when it comes to the hashtags so you're gonna want to instead of the right like the first hashtag was project hashtag project grown up Right now, that hashtag has like under a hundred posts, like hundred plus posts. That means it's not going to help your page, right? So what you oh. want to do is start doing like around twenty to twenty-five hashtags a post. Um, twenty to twenty-five hashtags a post. You can even go up to thirty. It doesn't hurt you as long as you're not using the same hashtags for every post. And use hashtags that 
just have to do with whatever your page is about. So hashtag podcast is good, hashtag success, maybe even get more specific. You can use five hashtags that are very broad, like hashtag business, hashtag podcast, hashtag success. Those are broad topics, but you want to get specific with the rest of them, like hashtag quotes for success, hashtag memes for podcasters, hashtag, and make sure they're still high ranking, but not like only a hundred posts. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Cause that's, a, I had heard that before too, that like those little, those little bitty ones, like nobody's ever going to search hashtag project growing up other than me. Um, <laughs> no one's using it other than me. That's apparently. part of the branding. We're working on it. Okay. Yeah, we're working on it, but uh, So we'll keep that one in there, but maybe in the back, maybe we'll scoot in it the to the back. back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are- yeah, so oh, those are- yeah, because also, yeah, one more thing, because also yeah. um, the hashtags that you put first will get prioritized by the Instagram algorithm. So you might want to mm. put that at the end. Yeah. Okay. And then does length matter? I read something too, because the only thing I know, like everything you're telling me, I bet is news to at least half of our listeners. So like nobody, nobody even thinks about that when they're like, oh, well, we're, we put our business up on Instagram, but I don't know. Nothing doesn't seem to be uh, bringing in any customers. But it's because they're not even looking into the research of how to use Instagram. They're just doing yeah. what they think. They're like, okay, we'll post a picture and it should bring business. People are going to see it. No, you have to look into the ways like how does Instagram work? So like this is, you're bringing the knowledge to the people. I appreciate that about you. Nitty, how did you get all these tips? Was it just like trial and error? Oh, 100%. It was trial and error. I remember getting started in like 2019 and I didn't invest in myself, I'd say, like in the early beginning, like I did, I bought like this $1,000 course. That was like my initial Ooh. like, like uh, investment. And that was um, to learn marketing and sales and things like that's really helped. But that was never for Instagram. So it was a bunch of trial and error. Um, and then just recently, I just started to, you know, I bought a bunch of Instagram courses, stuff like that, just to see if my expertise is in line with other experts out there. And that's really how I've been able to help so many people too. Nice, nice, nice. It's, a, it's insane, like seeing how much you've done with being so young. I'm sure you hear that all the time. I'm sorry, I have to bring it up though. I'm young too. I would like to say I am only 26, but for you, I mean, you don't think that's young, but I think that's young. Everybody no, else tells me that's I young. Think that's so young. Yeah. No, so no, young. Really. That's really young, but you're even younger. Yeah. So <laughs> you're obviously way ahead of your time. Um, the energy that I see from you on Twitter, I love it. I can tell that you're not going to plateau anytime soon. You know, I don't see you burning out or anything like that. We mentioned Gary V a little bit earlier, and I know we talked about Tim Ferriss too. Um, making sure that you don't get left behind. Things are always changing. We're growing up. Obviously the times are always changing. While some of the old people might say that uh, your age is a bit of a disadvantage. I kind of see it as like a competitive advantage because you're there with the in crowd with the youth. Gary V always talks about how that's kind of who he keeps an eye on. Like, I know, I think you follow him too. So, you know, he always mentions like he'd be checking out like the, the app store of like the young teens because that's where the money's at. So since you're in that in crowd, do you think you got that advantage? You're going to know what's coming up or are you already thinking like, okay, I'm 16. So what are the 12 year olds getting into? Like, where are you at? What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I hundred percent as like, um, talking about advantage, I feel like, you know, my age is definitely an advantage. I would, I rarely heard, oh, you're only 16. Why would I listen to you? Um, maybe it's because I didn't surround myself with that type of energy of people. Um, but I always felt like my age was an advantage because the youth is the future, right? The youth is the future. And those are the people that are going to be, you know, building these businesses, making this money and going online and teaching people things and getting into, you know, that sort of business model and all those sort of things. And, but I do feel like um, being in a young, you know, age group and being like, even going to high school every day and all that sort of stuff, you get to see how these kids think and you get to see, you know, even if a new trend comes up, like, is that going to correlate with other teenagers? Is it, are teenagers really going to bring it up? Are they going to amplify what's going on in the real world? Like what's happening? And it's so, it's so much easier to see as a teenager who actually goes to high school and stuff to see how these teen, teenagers think not only in the business world, not only, you know, social media space, but also, you know, um, you know, like things like social justice and even in the real world, like real world problems and things like that, that you see going on, how teens speak up for it. And I feel like even Gen Z, like, you know, you hear a lot of things about Gen Z and I feel like we tend to be the people who like go after it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like we see things differently than the older generations do. And I feel like that's an advantage. Like skinny jeans. <laughs> I keep seeing the memes about that. <laughs> 
Um, but anyway, so yeah, um, I heard I heard the thing about skinny jeans. <laughs> Are you yay or nay? <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't wear them no more. I mean, I stopped like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I gotta go throw mine out. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, are Open skinny jeans out? I just got yeah. some. I literally just got some. Are they out again? They're out. They're <laughs> out. You know what? They're in for 26. I feel like so baggy pants now. God. I feel like baggy pants. You know, I'm kind pants, of okay with like that, though, because then I won't. Like that. Are you kidding me? They're, they're more comfortable. comfortable. Come on. <laughs> they are. No yeah, shorts yeah, ever really make are. a comeback. Alex, if cargo shorts ever make a comeback, I'm going to be pissed. Because I tried so hard to make the cargo shorts work, and it just did not work. Work, well, cargo mm-hmm. pants are coming back. I just watched. Yeah, the they are. The they are back. Wearing them. They look pretty sick. She was like, "I got some Kim Possible vibes." I was like, "Oh, I can jump on that train <laughs> real quick." But uh, Nitty, anyway, so you were saying that you know it's really nice that you can see what teenagers are into and that sort of a thing. So would you say that's? And you did say that's an advantage. So what is the disadvantage to being so successful? at 16 man the disadvantage of being so successful at 16 i have not thought about that because i'm always looking at the upside down i I don't know like maybe like i don't know i don't think there's a disadvantage maybe you know what i can think of is some kids if they were successful at 16 maybe they let it get to their head and they're so young that they don't have any humility no more and their ego is too high because being so young and, you know, you could be making all this money and you have kids going to high school with you who don't make anything and like you have an impact and all that sort of stuff that could get to some people's head. I go to school acting like a normal kid. People, act, they find me on social media. They ask what I do. And I just answer in the most simple mm-hmm. sentence. I don't go around telling people, you know, this is this, this and this unless they ask. I don't feel like I'm better than anybody. And I have the humility to learn from anyone and everyone like I can learn from anyone and everyone regardless. And I feel like sometimes some people will stumble on that and their ego will be too high for that, you know? I don't know about your uh, like your family or how you're raised, but the way that you're talking, I feel like a lot of that comes from how you're raised. So somebody <laughs> just Amen. Right says that that sounds right, like you're raised right. Um, honestly, I think a lot of that too, the biggest difference is it all comes down to hard work. I don't even think that the money thing necessarily comes down to age, but rather having to work for it yourself. You know, you weren't handed you know, the, the success that you have, you've worked your tail off for it. You're still working for it every day. You're working a lot harder than those other kids at school, you know, and that's okay. That's if they're cool doing what they're doing, that's totally fine. But you wanted that you have that ambition and you're going after it, you're getting it done. So like, I mean, I think that you're good. I think that you're good. I appreciate that. I really do. And I feel like something a lot of people say like older people to me in my Twitter comments and stuff they're usually like make sure you enjoy your youth and stuff and that's the thing my social media is only used to show my business side so so many people think that's my only life like I don't ever show my real life like nobody knows what goes on nobody knows how I hang out with my friends nobody knows none of that because that's really my private stuff so that's also something I feel like people don't know that I also enjoy my life and like actually you know enjoy my youth It's not like I'm always glued to my computer and doing this stuff. Um, But yeah, yeah. How how do you balance that? So how do you balance keeping your personal life personal while at the same time making sure that your content is showing your personality? Of course. I mean, I feel like I'm so naturally, like I've been working hard from a young age, getting good grades in school um, and all that sort of stuff. My parents are immigrants. They always raised me to do well in school. And I watched them struggle financially like bad as I got older. Um, Just a whole bunch of stuff that I just, I had to push for this. So yeah, I mean, I balance it by like remembering, like if I get off track and I start like hanging out with my friends too much, or I'm like not focusing as much on my actual work that I got to get done. I realize like, look, this is the mission. This is where you came from. This is where your parents were. You could go back to that at any time. Like you got to keep your you know foot on the gas. And also when I'm working too much, sometimes I realize you got to take a break. Otherwise you're going to burn out. You're not going to be able to work no more. You know, so I go spend time with friends, my girlfriend, um, in my family. Like, I make sure I spend time with, you know, people I love. I really value that as well. So I don't want to harp on your age too much, um, but I am interested. You're talking about, you know, working hard, um, being humble, but also making sure 
that you have some time for fun. Where do you see yourself in five to 10 years, not only from, you know, a work standpoint, but also like a fun standpoint, what are some things you want to accomplish? What are your goals and ambitions? And yeah, I'm just, I'm interested because like at when I was 16, I don't even think I was thinking about that, but now I do. So <laughs> I think I was like, can I get yeah, my driver's definitely. license now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, within the next five years, I definitely want my driver's license. I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> definitely. But um, yeah, I am actually starting to learn to drive next month. So that's going to be cool. But yeah. So besides that, I mean, I want to continue doing this online stuff, um, like talking about work stuff. I do want to continue doing this online stuff, um, learning how to invest better, like into the market. Like I already invest in the market, but I want to learn how to like really go, like I know how to go really hard with like digital products and making money online and services and stuff like that. Agency income, like I have all that, but I want to know how to like day trade, even like do options and stuff like that, where I can make a lot of money through the market. So that's something I want to keep in mind. That's like the long-term vision along with like a clothing brand. That's also something. So that's like the business side. Um, while also, you know, learning and educating myself, constantly reading a lot of books, listening to a lot of podcasts. That's also, I always, I love learning. That's really what it is. And as a I get older the fun side I do want to travel I, I, I want to travel a lot I want to travel I want to bring people with me and I just want to meet people and go around the world and do that sort of stuff have the freedom to do that sort of stuff and also help my parents so they don't struggle as much as well and I think that's really that's really the mission is just freedom and having that quality time with the people I love that's amazing I think that's that's a really really good example and most of those things are basically exactly what I want. You're way more ahead of the game. You are like 10 years younger and way more ahead of the game. So if you, if no it's one 10 has given, years ahead of it, well, yeah, but <laughs> if no one's given you a pat on the back, if you could just reach around and pat yourself on the back, cause I am like incredibly proud. I don't even know you like that, but I'm very proud. Also side note. Um, you. if you don't know Hunter, we should introduce her to Hunter because Hunter Kali, I met her also on Instagram, um, Instagram and uh, Twitter, but she oh, I think does I that her. kind of stuff of what you want to learn. I don't know if it's options and I don't know if it's shorts, but she does something that I tried to learn and yes, it was way out of my, her. it was way out of my bandwidth, but I was on her, um, one of her like community zooms or something before. Oh, cool. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had her on the podcast and it was, it was so like, she taught me a lot, but it wasn't, whew, it was still too much for me. I'm, I'm not good at math and I don't like math. I thought I could get myself to like it for the money, but I couldn't, I can't, math's not my friend. So anyways, Amy mentioned that, um, you know, obviously we had somebody else on the po podcast. We have you on the podcast now and you have your own podcast, as she mentioned earlier, so how did you decide to start one and how's it going so far? Because based off our experience, like it's a lot of work. So I, maybe that's an answer, but really, I mean, to be honest, um, I went, I came into like podcasting, like that was my second social or like third social media besides Instagram and LinkedIn and stuff. I just decided, Hey, I want to talk and, and into the phone and just see where this goes because you know, I was never a really good speaker. Um, if you put like 2019 me here to speak with you guys, my voice would be trembling and I'd be so scared to talk to you guys. I was so introverted. I was so like shy even. And I don't know, people would have never guessed now that I tell them that. But it was, you know, also me putting my back against the wall and saying, you got to do this so you can become the person you need to be to be able to openly be able to communicate with people and be able to talk to them better. So I decided to start it in 2019 and then it went through some ups and downs. But really, it's like I hear all these people like saying like it's so much work. All I did was talk into the phone <laughs> and like I went on the rank. I'm not even consistent with it. And I went on the ranking and it said I'm top 10% globally. So for you guys putting in this much effort, yeah. you guys should check. Yeah, you guys should check where yours is at because I'm sure you guys are much higher if you're doing like consistently and you're putting in that much effort and stuff because mine ended up being top 10% globally. And I was, I was shocked. I was like, I'm not, I don't even have a microphone. I'm barely, I'm not even putting my AirPods in nothing. I'm just recording and just talking, no editing, nothing. So it's just about putting out the content consistently, I think, because for an entire year, I released a podcast a week. 
And I think that's really what it was and constantly pushing it on my socials. Yeah, consistency is definitely key. Um, I actually, I was listening to some of your podcasts earlier today. I like the little, like the short little episodes, like like six to 10 minute episodes, just like some personal advice. You can just tell you're like, I just need to tell some people real quick. Like in case y'all don't know, why aren't we doing this? Like basically, I love it. So with that, you know, I know a lot of your stuff looks like business from the front. <laughs> I guess I guess you're giving me a mullet here. So all of your socials and everything, it's way business from the front. But when you get into the podcast, you see a little bit more of your personality, a little yeah. deeper of like the kind of the the personal growth within you, not just growing your business, but growing as a human, as a person. What do we yeah. what do you think that we need in the world? Like, why aren't people happy? What are we missing? Uh, love and kindness, really, that's all it is. If you can, you know, realize that people are actually good at heart and like, we're all love, like really stop, like don't judge people and just let them do their thing and just love the person. Like what I do is whenever I pass a stranger on the sidewalk, I'll just say in head, I love you. Like, I know it sounds weird, but you're really like, or like a kid at school, like, I love you. Like, you like you know, you're a homie. Like, I love you. Like, you're cool. Because like, you know, it, everyone, you guys can all be brothers and sisters. Like, we're yeah. all the same. And I feel like love, kindness, even complimenting someone, going up to someone. I've been noticing that lately because I went back to school. These kids haven't been back to school in two years almost. And going back to school now, a lot of these kids are quiet. So what I try to do is I try to open up conversation with them. I be as kind as possible, as high energy as possible, make them very comfortable. And people appreciate that, you know? And I think it's that love, kindness, and energy you can give to others. It'll come right back to you. Absolutely. I feel like love is like, love is like success. Spread the love, yes. spread the success. Yes. There's plenty to go around. As always, you know, we got to slay that Q&A. This is our take on our typical rapid fire finale here. Alex, you go first. All right. So if you could name one thing off the top of your head, what is the number one thing people are doing wrong on Instagram? They're not getting their, their visuals right. They'll literally post anything. Like, for example, I don't want to hurt you. No, you're feelings, good. Like our meme? <laughs> that yeah. repost that, that. Yeah. A- <laughs> that meme. <laughs> you good it was a test i was like let me throw something up yeah. first thing i thought of let's see what she says because that's what a lot of people do there's like oh i gotta post something yeah. that's the thing too that a lot of people are like oh you have to post every day you have to post every day doesn't matter what you're posting just post every single day consistency but you should also try to make the quality important like you know if it's yeah. super annoying if it's real terrible people will unfollow you 100 percent. you got to figure out your color scheme and then what sort of content you're going to post and that's literally it you know Okay, perfect, perfect. So you you've hit over 50k now. Uh, I know 60s 60s next on your list right there. If you kind of lost your mind one day, your 16 year old uh, wild self kicked in, and you spent all that money on one thing or at one place, where would it be? Or what would you spend it all on? Oh, I, I feel like I'm so good with my money. I wouldn't go and like spend it. I feel like I was just I feel like I'm growing going broke in the market or something like <laughs> you have to. And- you have to. You're putting uh, your own gun okay. to your head and saying, "I have to spend this on literally anything." Or that you is could put, not a good idea. You could put what all fifty. It? Oh yeah, you could put all fifty into a stock, but it has to be a very risky stock if you're gonna do that. <laughs> okay, I see. Man, I don't know about the risky stock. Maybe a, a cryptocurrency or something. I don't know. Fifty k and Doge. If I were to like, if I had like, yeah, maybe that's what I was thinking. If I had like a gun in my head and had to go buy something, I don't know what I would. Maybe I don't know. Shit. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> a car or something. A car, like if I had to. Yeah, a car. Probably get a house, a new house for your parents. Well, no. For fifty yeah, k, I guess too. not. Half of it. Down I, what fifty k? That's like you playing? Me, Jersey, yeah, no, that's what I was like. I guess. <laughs> All right, Danielle. Okay. Well, this is probably a little similar to what Alex asked, but a, I think yeah. Pick a different question, real quick. I don't know. I feel like it could be a really interesting. I think- I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, do it okay, anyway. I'll, I'll expand okay. a little bit. So what is your biggest pet peeve that people do on social media? It could be any social media. Biggest pet peeve that people do on social media? Shit. I, that's I'm, that's kind of like uh, like a not so good question to ask me because I really let people do their thing and I don't really care. But um, I think biggest pet peeve, I think 
people don't promote themselves enough and they expect results. So if they have a product and they're scared to like be like, you know, buy this because it'll help you or like um, people releasing like courses and stuff that are not really going to help people. Um, like I, I'm not one to judge yep. because like you can do your thing. But like if, if it's not going to help someone and you're just doing it for the money and you're going to disappear from the Internet after you make your first thousand, then what are you doing this for? You know, like that that kind of bothers me. It's a good answer. I was kind of expecting like, oh, the trolls or something like that. So that was a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a perfect answer. Honestly, that's that's a perfect summary of all the other information. Everything else you've told us tonight, though, it just shows that like it shows us your values. You really value kindness. You value hard work, being the best person you can be and being the best to others that you can possibly be. So as always, we of course need to leave you with some words to live by. This time they're coming from Nitty Saran. Don't be afraid to be kind. Don't be afraid to work hard and don't be afraid to want to be wealthy. Go do what you want to do and don't let anyone hold you back. Join us for new episodes every other week. They'll be coming out Monday so you can start the week off right as we unravel another chapter of Project Grown Up. If you know anyone who would be a good interview for our PG Inspiring Stories, send us an email at projgrownup at gmail.com and always be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave us a five-star review. Hopefully you found some keys to success in this episode. Cheers to another week of trying to be a grown-up. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers. You too. <laughs> oh, okay. Cheers. Cheers.